welcome Jim Mann. Thank you, William, and thanks to World's 50 Best for hosting us. I normally would get up and do my best Steve Olson impersonation, kind of channeling the country preacher. Uh, but in the entrance of only 10 minutes, I'm going to channel Alex Cretania from Poor and actually read from a speech. I find that when Alex reads from his speeches, he actually gets through them and gets all the points across. So forgive me. Uh, the concept of being the best is something that is, oh, there's Steve Olson right there. Um, is something that we in the Midwest, I think, have a really hard time channeling. So what I'm gonna read is a sort of uh, my rationalization of it. And the, my talk is called World's Favorite Bar, which is something that I find maybe more easy to digest as a Midwesterner, and it comes from Jacob Breyers reminding me that perhaps it's not actually 50 best, but it's uh, a selection of the voters' top five favorite bars collated. So. I'll begin. I've been asked to speak today because PDT was recognized as the best bar in the world in 2011. It was the leader of the list until 2015 when we'd appeared eight consecutive years from 2009 to 2016, our last year on the list. Ghost of Christmas uh, past here. Last year when William Drew was planning a celebration, he asked me if I'd be willing to give a talk on what makes the world's best bar, and I playfully reminded it that I'm not sure I'm qualified. In spite of PDT's departure from the list, I couldn't be more proud of a team in New York today including a handful of staff members who opened the bar with me in 2007. My protege, Jeff Bell, who's now worked on St. Mark's Place longer than I have, and our head bartender, A.K. Hada, are prodigiously talented operators who've improved our team and raised the standard over the years since I've left. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't care about being off the list today, but I suppose it makes more sense given how much the industry has changed since the list inception in 2009. Before I began discussing them, hopefully distressing what will invite me to speak today, I think it's important to point out how small this industry was back then. There were seven serious cocktail bars in New York City when PDT opened in 2007 in May. Today, when I travel the world to speak with young bartenders, I typically start out reminding them that you could have fit nearly all the cocktail geeks who frequent them in Pegu Club back then. I finally recall meeting most of them, along with many of them, through Audrey Saunders and Julie Reiner, who personally introduced me as an opening bartender on Audrey's team in 2005. Back then, we knew each other personally, we knew each other's specs, and we even shared the same clientele. Wow, how things have changed. There were so few professional bartenders interested in the classics and culinary-minded riffs we planned on serving when I opened PDT with two of my regulars from Pegu Club, Don Lee and, Jaragon, and John Darragon. After covering for the Death & Co staff so they could attend Gary Regan's Cocktails in the Country getaway, I knew they were ready for the big leagues when we opened. I rounded out my roster with a handful of staff who weren't able to get full-time in the city's seven other lounges. Many of you have heard the history of PDT, so I won't force you to sit through it again, but I figured I'd recall it here because many of the attributes that presumably led us to be recognized as one of the best bars in the world are still in play today. First and foremost, I've always prioritized accommodating service at PDT. Off the back of my time at Gramercy Tavern, I was determined to bring the knowledgeable, attentive service I'd been steeped in to the bar, which was coming off the end of years the years of a long battle with vodka and the multicolored martinis. Cocktail bars in 2007 felt somewhere between an omakase sushi bar and a boardwalk empire reunion, and I wanted to change this by making them more approachable and hospitable. Many would regard us now as one of the most formal cocktail bars in New York City, but back then, uh, PDT was the first bar to not play jazz music on a loop. We opened our bar wearing butchered aprons and t-shirts, with Tribe Called Quest, Tater Tots, and Taxidermy. Sure, there's no standing and we take reservations, but our Get Smart entrance and offering sent a shockwave throughout the industry that paved the way for the more casual bar service today. Back then, I was hugely inspired by Sasha Petrowski's systems at Milk and Honey, including taking reservations, upholding etiquette among the staff and patrons, and cross-training the entire staff so guests were always served by an expert. At that time, Sasha was reclusive and refused to take most interviews. Angel Share was equally secretive, so when New York City discovered its modern speakeasies, PDT became the concept chief's beneficiary in the media. This was back when print media was king, which brought us new guests. PDT opened amidst the financial crash when sprawling opulent bars closed or reconcepted to stay afloat. Lobster and steak were soon replaced by short rib and pork belly on menus across the city. 
as comfort food began to be the latest trend. The high-low combination of hot dogs and tater tots with craft cocktails and local beers and wines turned out to be the perfect offering during the recession to guests who wanted to offer a memorable experience that didn't break the bank. When Don Lee combined the best of both worlds in the Benton's bacon-infused bourbon old fashion on our first winter menu in 2007, served with the city's first crystal clear commercial ice cube, we never looked back. It's still our most popular drink in New York and Hong Kong to date. I'd like to say this is a good time to point out that success isn't just the byproduct of hard work and ingenuity, it's a byproduct of timing and luck, which we had a lot of both, a lot of both back then. Despite being off the list, awards, podiums, and out of the media for the last few years, PDT is busier than ever. And while I'd love to credit my handiwork, I've come to the humbling conclusion that my business partner, Brian Chabero's kitschy phone booth entrance in Crift Dogs is the gift that keeps on giving. Because I've, what I've learned over the years is that people don't just go out for camaraderie and drinks, they go out for an experience. Something to share with their friends and colleagues the next day and, and our much beleaguered uh, phone booth entrance gives this to them. Of all the interest in PDT over the years, one of the features I'm most proud of was being featured as a case study in Jonah Berger's best-selling book on discovery brands, Contagious. In it, Berger asserts that arguably the most powerful form of marketing is through word-of-mouth recommendation, and because PDT doesn't have a working website or active social media channels or any markings outside to advertise its existence, you have to be told about PDT by someone else. And this he found significant. I still do today, when I sit up on the stoop above the bar and see groups of New Yorkers and tourists alike point out our shabby storefront and say, this is where PDT is. Perhaps the main reason I find it so gratifying is because I've told the story of PDT a thousand times to anyone who'd listen to it. And unlike a game of telephone, I often hear it repeated back to me correctly. We take day of reservations, there's no standing, bar seats are first come, first serve, for walk-ins, the hot dogs are cooked at crypt dogs and garnished with ingredients from nearby chef's kitchens. Like so many of New York City's institutions that I've been inspired by, PDT has stubbornly not evolved in matters seemingly crucial to making the list today. We don't have a Facebook or Instagram page, and after a short foray on Twitter, I lost the password to our account and didn't make an effort to recover it. <laughs> We're a speakeasy after all, right? After changing our menu in its entirety the first year, we realized that we should give our guests something familiar to return to and have a core list of offerings the, on the menu for the last decade. On a great day, it feels like Katz's, but with cocktails instead of pastrami. Maybe the analogy isn't completely accurate. We're still innovating, if you ask me. But we've foregone fancy tech, vintage spirits, and garish glassware for a more elemental drinks program. One of the first things I'd like, I learned, thanks to the Benton's Old Fashioned, is if you're ever fortunate enough to travel abroad to make your drinks at a cocktail festival or a pop-up, it's nice to have drinks prepared with internationally distributed ingredients so you can travel with clothes instead of bacon lard to wear while you're sightseeing instead of prepping. Indeed, PDT was one of the first cocktail bars to pop up. One of them landed us a second nicer location in Hong Kong, which just celebrated its first birthday. Having put on the hot dog and cocktail show in Hong Kong, Melbourne, Tokyo, Paris, Barcelona, and beyond, Jeff and I are more selective about these opportunities now and don't host guest bartenders as much as we did when we opened. Did I mention I wrote a book, released an app? Have fielded finalists in international drinks competitions? All of this wasn't enough to make the list in 2017 or 18, but PDT had its time in the sun, and I'd say it's pretty darn cool that we were once among so many other great bars and bar operators like the ones I'm here with today. To conclude, yes, I'm actually going to stop talking in time. I'm deeply honored to share the stage with the industry leaders that follow me today. I want to thank 50 Best for gathering us here to commemorate the 10th year of this prestigious list. I hope it will continue to epitomize the values of our industry I'm most proud of. Hospitality, generosity, hard work, ingenuity, camaraderie, and some new ones I'm excited to see more of. Social progress, environmental consciousness, and political action. While all being in the drinks business, we're first and foremost in the relationship forging business, and in our best moments, the memory creating business. Tonight, you've all created another one for me. Thanks to Top 50, or 50 Best, for the privilege of getting these talks underway on behalf of my team at PDT. Thank you very much. <laughs>